Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Elsa Skogstrom Felt, President and CEO of The Hunger Project. Founded in 1977, The Hunger Project's mission is to end hunger and poverty with sustainable, grassroots, women-centered strategies. Elsa has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Elsa, for joining us today. Thank you. So, hunger is such an intractable problem, but it shouldn't be a problem. We have the food, we have the logistical ability to feed everyone on the planet. Talk about the Hunger Project and talk about your work to end hunger in this world. Right, thank you. You're right, it shouldn't be a problem. And uh, what we have seen in our experience the last uh, 30 years is that hunger is not only an issue about food, it's a very integrated issue affected by uh, things as education, agriculture, water, sanitation, uh, participation in the local democracy, and a lot of different things. So we have pioneered community-led strategies. And what we mean by that is that to create a change process, you need to start with the people in the center and so that people themselves can see that they are not victims or they are not dependent, but they are the actors and they can create change themselves. So the human component is very important in this and to create an enabling environment for people to be able to step up and uh, create a change process in their community. So this is not a top-down approach. This is a inside outward appro out approach. It's not even a bottom-up approach. It's an inside into the center of that circle, the people who are experiencing hunger in these communities yeah. to empower them. Exactly. Now, how do you take the powerless and make them powerful? Well, we have created different methods and uh, workshops to engage people in their own uh, future. We have a, a version we call the Vision, Commitment and Action Workshop. And you talk to the community, the everybody, you invite everybody, women, uh, men and, and youth, to discuss what would our future look like if we could make it happen. And um, uh, the, all the things that come to the surface are, of course, what uh, the basic needs are for people. So it's about sanitation, it's about education, it's about income, it's about food, it's about having access to doctors, uh, having access to credits. So basically the Millennium Development Goals. And uh, after creating a vision, uh, there is a very important component. It needs to discuss who shall do this. So shall we wait for someone to come and, and rescue us or are we uh, actually resources for doing this? And what can we start doing today? So we talk about commitment to go out of thinking that you're dependent to go in to see that you can be a key change agent. So this is about what, 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 what we in this country um, have called the social compact. Mm -hmm. the, the idea that, uh, that citizens, communities, have an agreement that allow that community to, to function and, and there are agreements amongst various segments of the community to help and to feed and to create security and, and to uh, create cohesion. And you're really coming in and you're saying, Hunger is a sign that that cohesion has broken down, that, that that compact has broken down. How do we repair it given your circumstance, given, given the, the unique uh, facts on the ground? Where do we start? Definitely, and I do think that the community is uh, the uh, social unit that knows where the priorities should be. It's very easy to come from the outside and make a lot of assumptions and try to dictate uh, what would be the best next step. But the community themselves can uh, and are the best ones to, to decide what is the next step for us as a whole community to solve the issues that we're talking so about. So you're very active in Africa, you're very active in South Asia. Yes. Um, and, um, and you have operations um, south of, the border, south of, uh, of this border in Mexico and, and um, in, in Latin America. How do you initially get involved in a particular community? How are you invited in? 
so far it has been uh, on request. Uh, there has been invitations uh, to go and see what are the opportunities to involve uh, the, the local communities. But there needs to, of course, to be uh, able to work with the communities. Leaders at different levels need to be uh, interested, willing and aware and engaged to a certain point in what is going to happen. So uh, on request so far. So when you get on the ground and you find that there is not that kind of engagement, there's not that, that kind of openness, um, are, are there situations where you say, you know, there's not sufficient consensus or do you still try and come in and, and provide support? Um, we try to a certain extent, but if the, it doesn't, uh, if it is not taken on, uh, there is no way you can push. Right. Uh, uh, you can't impose and from the outside. Exactly. And our, uh, one of our key uh, strengths, I would say, that we only work with local staff. And so all our staff in Ghana are from Ghana and uh, uh, they are then working with the communities and we don't, in the beginning we work with our staff visiting, but then we have a trained a trainer system. So even the ones who work in the community, they are from that community. So also to strengthen the change come from within process. So your staff here are, um, they're, they kind of, provide coordination, consistency across your programs, they raise money, they do marketing and so on, um, but the actual on the ground work, that is being done uh, locally by people who really do, do know. So they come into these communities, they're invited in, they start the, the program, and I guess one of the first things you do is you have a community meeting. Yes. And we have seen that there are three uh, components that need to happen. And that's, we call one mobilizing everyone. And it's about engagement uh, and uh, this first part that you mentioned. And the second part is to make sure that women are included and also to work with equality. And actually women, they are uh, responsible for many of the areas around hunger and community and families. So they are uh, great resources and uh, key change agents for that. And the third one is uh, the pillar of making the structure work. So those three things are always components that we uh, use. So once you bring people together and you start to create that consensus for action, how, do the, how, do those, that, how does that consensus transform into actual new facts on the ground. Right, so let us take an example uh, in Africa. So to um, get a number of people that is enough to start a uh, change process, normally you have to work with a group of villages because one village is uh, two small social units. So we work uh, or engage maybe 10 or up to 20 villages, depending on how uh, dense the population lives, and uh, work together on a joint vision for all those villages. And that work can take two years, three years, one year. It's depending on how engaged and how active the community already is and if and when they can see that they are the key change agents. So, in the beginning, you don't see a lot. So if you would go there during those two years, you wouldn't see any change. Right. It's sort of like the, the development of a contractual framework mm. uh, or a framework for action. Until you have consensus, until you work through all the issues, it's all talk. Exactly. Exactly. And then they identified the areas that they would like to work on. And in uh, Africa, as I mentioned before, it's the Millennium Development Goals and also in those remote areas, because we only work in the rural areas. There is um, very little infrastructure, both when it comes to roads and all community centers. So uh, the population, uh, they start to plan a community center that has to be in an area that is neutral to all the villages, that they all can align on. And uh, they work on, on getting a piece of land, uh, some hectares of land, and to construct a building 
uh, based on their own resources. Uh, and that building uh, uh, can see can be a little bit different in different areas, but the major components are a big community hall where they can uh, start to organize themselves and create the local uh, committees for the areas that they mm -hmm. want to change with elected leaders from the community. There is a um, health center if, if they don't have one close by and the community makes an agreement with the, the local government that they provide a nurses or a pharmacy or what are the things that they would need to have access to. There is a micro credit facility uh, often because uh, in the rural areas there is no access to credit. And there uh, we are the ones who um, provide the first revolving loan fund. But the people themselves own and manage that institution. And there is a l big training component and also a component about how do I invest money for getting return on investment. So uh, micro business uh, training that goes together with that. So, so once you have this, this building built mm. um, and you have the, the seeds now of, these, of this health facility, uh, and so on. What is the next step after that? Well, there are uh, some more components and, and the hunger is, all, of course, uh, linked to agriculture. Mm -hmm. So there is a communal garden and uh, there is uh, skills development and knowledge uh, sharing. So you move from isolated uh, farming and, and perhaps uh, buttressed by, by other uh, activities into a community farming, which, which now has risk sharing, right? So if somebody's crops as an isolated uh, 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 farmer uh, were to fail, that's catastrophic. But if you have a community coming together, then those risks can be ameliorated by the success of another member of the community. Exactly, and actually the purpose of the garden is uh, primarily to uh, test and learn new ways of doing your agriculture mm -hmm. and to learn the nu nutrition aspects of learning, agriculture. Learning from others. But then the, what is produced there is for the community and that is uh, saved in a food bank. Right. So it's uh, security for the times of the year when there is no food available. Mm -hmm. So it's also a way to level out the differences over the year. How are the decisions made? Uh, uh, which crops are, are going to be grown? So uh, mostly we worked uh, to connect the community with the government's uh, agricultural extension workers. And they are looking into things like climate change, uh, what are the crops that are suitable for the different areas of the different countries. So th that's a partnership. But we also look into what is the traditional knowledge of the community that has maybe been lost. And one interesting example, I was just in, uh, uh, in Benin uh, and uh, the community used to um, uh, use the plant Moringa Mm -hmm. uh, as be, it's super nutritious, uh, very natural, easy to grow plant. It grows in arid, arid environments if I, if I have the right plant. Right. And so that ha was a knowledge that used to be there in the community, which was kind of left out. And uh, now they're bringing it back and they are organizing how to, uh, to grow Moringa. And they are uh, creating small businesses mm -hmm. around uh, drying the leaves, making powder and even selling it on the market. And it's uh, super nutritious. And we can see... It has a high protein yield, right? If over if one protein. year, you can see such a big difference in the children. Nutrition is a very important part of hunger issue because nutrition, it's not, it's not just that you need to have more food. You need to know about which type of food you, uh, that will help your children to grow at the best pace. It's about getting knowledge about... Um, uh, what influence water has. Clean water is very important. Sanitation is very important. 
education is um, really important. So nutrition is also in need of a holistic approach. It's not something you can solve with one specific right. sectorial action. Describe the extent of the organization. You serve um, communities in 22 countries, I believe, and uh, mostly in Africa and, and South Asia, Southeast Asia mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Um, and, and, and how many people do you have and how does your funding work? So we have uh, 12 uh, countries where we have programs and the other 10 are majorly working on advocacy and fundraising. Uh, so that's the setup. We work in Europe, uh, in Australia, in US and Canada. And the fundraising uh, is, is conducted what is in the geographies that are roughly defined by the Western world. Or the northern, depending or the northern, on how the you... the northern countries, yeah. depending on uh, yeah. Europe and, and the United States mm -hmm. um, and Australia. And the consumer countries are, are, the, uh, are countries in Africa, what, what can be called less developed countries. But it isn't really less developed countries, it's really regions. Yes. Um, it's it's, it's micro-targeting, really, of uh, areas that are remote, yeah. Sometimes disenfranchised. Sometimes takes uh, you know a day of, of of walking just to just to get to the point where you can be close to where you where right. you want to go. Yeah, I, and I think that's part of the challenge for the future. That uh, this thing with uh, underdeveloped and developed countries that's not longer the. It's not. It, it's not valid. a correct right. right. The, it's it, it's as if you're 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 saying that that a country like Mexico. Um, or even a country like the United States, like uh, that everything is generic. It just isn't true. There are regions of great poverty and great wealth in a country like the United States. The same is true for most countries nowadays. Right. So, for instance, a country like uh, India that is uh, growing and it's a fast-moving uh, country internationally when it comes to economics. Tremendously wealthy, yeah. really. But and there are hundreds of millions of people living in hunger and poverty in the rural remote areas. So the challenge uh, is that countries now see, well, they are well on their way. Yes, in average, but not in those specific areas. So we need to uh, focus our efforts uh, to support the areas where uh, hunger and poverty is really entrenched. And what's interesting is to see the internationalization of the nonprofit sector in which organizations like yours can act as consultants that bring in certain expertise combined with the local expertise equally valuable. Right. Um, and each person making their own contribution in time, in knowledge, in treasure to deal with a human problem. Yes, and I think that's also part of the, the challenge we have that a lot of funds in the world are very sectori sectorized. So uh, there are funds for water, there are funds for education, there are funds for gender. Uh, uh, and there is not so much uh, funds that trust that the community will know the best for their future. So it's a lot of labels that are trying to come together uh, and not honoring the leadership of the local community. So in part, this, this project is also a, a expression of a philosophy of respect, uh, a philosophy of mutual learning, of, of a collaboration yes. uh, amongst people who each have something to give to create a solution to hungry in our world. Yeah, and now uh, the Millennium Development Goals will be ended this year. And we have, we the world, have done a lot of progress, but there is still so much to be done. And in September, uh, we the United Nations, we the world, we will uh, ratify the next set of goals, the Sustainable Development Goals. and. For the Millennium Development Goals, we agreed to uh, cut hunger and poverty in half. And the next step is to eradicate it, to go to zero. That's a very bold goal and uh, there is a big alignment around that. But it is, uh, as in any endeavor, the first half, there are a lot of easy wins. Right. The second half, 
that's now, going to be another mountain to climb. Now we need endurance, now we need patience, and now we need collaboration. Now we cannot approach things in sectors. We need to come together to see where are we overlapping, where are the gaps, and how do we put the people and the women in the center. And it needs to be a truly international effort that transcends party or political philosophy or any of these other uh, silly little divisions so that we can get back to the essential of alleviating hunger and eliminating hunger in our world. Yeah, and it needs to be done on a sustainable, self-reliant base. Right. Uh, and so we and them is not there, it's we, all of us. And to create and support and enable vibrant rural economies that are self-reliant, uh, that's the only way to go for a susta sustainable change. Oh, oh, a wonderful mission. Also, Scott Sonfeld, thank you so much for sharing your work at The Hunger Project, and thank you so much for your insight. Thank you.